Look, if you, if you look at where we are today, we are in a supply constraint environment. If you look at what it takes to fix it, it takes time. And the time is to build that capacity, put the capacity online, start manufacturing and start shipping. So if I look at where we are today with the capacity we have, the capacity we are adding through the end of 22, and where the demand is, we're still not gonna catch up to that demand. So until supply and demand balance, we're not going to be out of where we are today, which is full allocation. Well, I guess, how, how did we get so out of balance? I mean, obviously, yes, COVID, shutdowns, I get that, but is that all it is, or is there something else at work to where we got to this point? Look, I can specifically talk about some of the uh, markets that we're in. So think about auto and industrial, right? Think about what's going on with the car. The car of two years ago is very different than the car of today. Yeah, it's a computer with it's wheels on it. Exactly, yeah. it's a computer, it's a computer platform that happens to have wheels and go from point A, point a to B. How does it go A to B? Well, the driver has something to do with it, but there's also a lot of compute, there's all a lot of imaging, which we do. A lot of power, now with the electrification, which is also something we do. That's demand that didn't exist two years ago. So not just the capacity level that was two, three years ago, it's a different mix of technologies that the cars require today. The same with industrial. Now that acceleration, we've always heard about, you know, in industry 4.0, factory automation. Well, that got a very big acceleration with the industrial market. You know, you need automation, you have the, uh, uh, social distancing in factories, that's playing a big role. You have the uh, uh, hand, uh, labor shortages. Yep. Well, how do you bridge all of that while maintaining output? That's all automation. But, but it's, so it does sound like though, that it's not just COVID, that this, this incredibly rapid change in the automotive manufacturing process and needs, GM, et cetera. You watch the Super Bowl, the electric Silverado, the F-150, but this is all happening so quickly that your industry is having to evolve even faster. That's right. So think about it this way. We've always known electrification and electric vehicles are going to be the future of, of mobility. That's fine. But the rate at which it happened, but more importantly, after two years of really a drought, you know, 2019, what we call inventory cor correction in the semiconductor. Mm -hmm. 2020 was COVID. So there was no CapEx investment happening. Actually, CapEx was taken offline in order to sustain operations because, you know, CapEx that's idle is a drag on financials. Ironically, uh, just like oil, when yeah, you're talking we, about electrification, <laughs> it's a, the same thing. We, we know that because it was a drag on our financial in those years as well. Yeah. So fast forward, demand came back, different mix, and we don't have time to recover. Now we're investing. I mean, you heard me talk about doubling our CapEx intensity. It's not for the lack of intent or investment, but it does take time. And you also talk about the shift. You are putting your fingerprint on this company, which is more and more to auto. That's right. Right? I mean, how big of an opportunity is that? And to my first question, why do you think on doesn't get the love from investors? Stock's done well, I think it's up 40% in 12 months, but doesn't get the love of an NVIDIA or an AMD. That's right. So look, uh, you, you can talk about uh, all the, uh, the sexy products, the stuff that drives the car. But what I remind everybody, and we, we, we are going to get the love. I'm not worried about it because we are a transformation story. You know, we've been doing the transformation for a year. That's very short period of time, we've done a lot of progress, there's a lot more to come. But we are in a transformation and we're not done with it. But what we're gonna come out is a company that is a leader in power and sensing. Intelligent power, intelligent sensing. What drives the car, what is the vision of the car, in order to allow all of the NVIDIAs and the AMD to see the road, is what we do. What allows the car to move on the road is what we do. So we are essential and we'll get our part Right now, we're building the foundation in order to solidify that part. And our progress, to be honest with you, is, has been great. And it's the momentum that we're building. It's not where we are today. It's have we built the momentum in order to sustain that transformation for cars? Yeah. And my answer is yes, and we're not done yet. You keep the car on the road. <laughs> That's it, a good, yes, yeah. We'll Hassan Al-Khuri. Write it down. Really? <laughs>